Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and happy Hanukkah! Tonight is night four of the Chemnitz Hanukkah special and we are going to dye some yarn using some layered colors in an immersion steam pan to create a soft watercolor effect. This technique is really dying more by feel than by math because we're going to layer and build up the colors more and more until we get the kind of hue that we want. And it's one of my favorite techniques, so I'm really excited. So let's go get started. I have 90 micro skeins right here in a combination of Wool to Dye Force Platinum Sock and Platinum DK. Both are 75% superwashed merino, 25% nylon, and we will be using this through the entire uh, Hanukkah special. This time I have added 15 of these 10 gram minis to each zip tie, uh, so hopefully I don't forget later that there's 150 grams on each of these. But let's go pre-soak them before we can really get into it. We are going to pre-soak all of our yarn in some plain tap water for a number of hours. Now, these zip ties are so useful, not just for when I'm about to dye a bunch of mini skeins, but I use them all the time in general. So if you would like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I use in these videos, uh, you can find uh, links and affiliate links down in the video description. Today, we are gonna play with pink, gray and sort of a midnight navy blue. For our pink, we are gonna use some deep magenta. I love this color. I am going to dilute some of this 1% stock solution of silver gray to give us a paler gray um, for the layer. And then we've got our deep saturated midnight blue color. This is a non-specific uh, stock solution that was that is two parts Dharma blue steeled, one part true black. And it is this beautiful blackish blue midnight color. And we're gonna use this for the pops of dark on the base of gray and pink that we layer together. I'm gonna go make up a stock of deep magenta, but I'm not gonna weigh out the dye and make a proper 1% stock. Uh, I am probably going to use a measuring spoon to measure out a certain amount of the color and dissolve it in a fairly non-specific amount of water uh, so that way I can dilute or and I can play uh, by feel to layer the color and the amount of color that I want on the yarn. I just dissolved one half of a teaspoon of the deep magenta powder in approximately 500 milliliters of water and that gave us this beautiful pink right here. This is our 1% stock of silver gray. That is one gram of the silver gray dye powder per 100 milliliters of water. And then this is our, it's looking fairly black, but it does read a bit bluish when it starts to dilute a little bit. This was a little over 12 grams of gunmetal, about six grams of true black in over two liters of water. Um, so Fairly non-specific, but these are the colors that, but these are the colors that we are going to play with, and I'm really excited. This combination of the pink and the silver gray is something that I've been playing with a lot uh, over the summer in 2020, and I just wanted to play with them again. But I want to dilute them a little bit more from what the full strength is here. So I think I will dilute the dye into one of these bottles using two tablespoons of either our silver gray or deep magenta and then filling the rest up with water. That'll be a really easy way for me to mix more and we can adjust that concentration as we start dyeing the yarn. This is why I wasn't super worried about the concentration of these dyes. See, even diluted a fair amount, the pink is still really, really bright, but it made a bigger difference for the gray, which I am excited about. In our steam pan, let's start with two tablespoons of white vinegar and eight cups of water. All right, I am coming over with some of our DK mini skeins. This is 
30 10 gram micro skeins. Now these minis are big enough that when we have it in the pan, uh, they aren't scrunched up as much. With full skeins, they sort of scrunch up and so that gives some more variability into the colorways you create. But they can actually be pretty straight in here. Now the heat is not yet on. And this is something that I have really been enjoying lately as this bottle is absolutely leaking on me. Um, but uh, I am curious how much I will be able to tap this out. I could use a spoon, but since it's cold, I can use my glove. And there's enough acid in here that you can see some of these lines going in already. By tapping it with my hands, we were also able to soften it some. Um, I wish, there we go, maybe that's a bit better. Um, what's another thing that's interesting is that the hue in our bottles, nope, we're definitely still leaking. The hue seems to look different after it's had a bit of time with the acid, but that could also really just be that we've had a little bit of time for that color to spread out a little bit more. And we just used about most of one of those bottles, but I am pretty happy with the spread. Hopefully our pink will not, hopefully our pink will not uh, leak as badly. And again, I am softening it. And the thing about this that is nice um, with using uh, this cool to start with is it gives us a little bit of time. If it were hot, these colors would start striking right away. And this allows a little bit of time to have some of that color spread and it'll go through down to the other layer. And so it'll spread, it'll combine, it'll layer. But I will wait for things to heat up for us to add um, some of that darker color so that way it can strike quickly. Now, we won't be able to get as slow um, of our application on the other side because then it'll already be hot. But we would be able to alter that a little bit um, by diluting the dye even more if we wanted to make sure that it's spread. But I don't mind um, seeing more of the color in places. It's just fairly random and as we move the yarn and layer more and more and more, we end up losing more of the white and it gets more and more random the more we move it. But again, since these minis can be fairly straight out, that isn't quite as random. And <laughs> I will say, for the relative potency of the two colors we mixed, just like we saw the pink didn't seem that much lighter, we used a lot less of our pink than we did of the gray. But now I'm going to start heating things up. Normally I would come in and start with a dark color, but I'm actually going to go ahead and flip the yarn now. The heat has barely been on for any real amount of time, but let's go ahead and turn off the heat while things are still fairly low, like I can comfortably put my hands in here. And let's go ahead and dye the other side. But you can see that a lot of the color that we have has struck in here already. And I can still come in, but this time now that it's a little warmer, you can see how much faster those colors are striking. If I hit it, touch it right away, then I can really help it move, especially if I can help it hit the water before it hits the yarn by pressing down a little bit, which is pretty fun. <laughs> Um, this feels very much like finger painting. 
and I am really, really enjoying myself. Okay. That was our pink and our gray. Layering the top colors on top and all over. When we get to the dark color, I am not, I don't think I'm gonna do the lines. I think I'm gonna do something a little more curved. Like think about um, some of the fun that we had in some of the Chemnitz dialogues this year. Just drawing hearts. I haven't decided if I'm gonna try to write something or draw hearts or what, but I just wanted to start with a more not quite like pastel, but I wanted to start with a medium base. And now we're coming in again, opening things up so that way we can keep layering this pink and gray base. And this part is a little more difficult with the mini skeins to open it up than if they were full skeins, but we will try. And in doing this, some of these colors will absolutely blend together, but that is totally fine. And the goal is not for things to be super repeating, but of course, <laughs> uh, when you're dealing with a mini skein, it's going to be fairly repeating um, doing something like this because, uh, especially with the DK, there's only like five to ten strands. Well, no, more than that. But there's, there's a limit to how many strands there are um, on, on the yarn, and so that uh, will affect it. So whereas if these were full skeins, when I do something like a triangle like this, that would mean that you know the gray is closer together here, further apart over there. But given that these are minis, that doesn't make as much of a difference. This would also make a lot of difference if we were going for some kind of fade set in here today, which is not quite uh, what we are doing. But we are creating, it's almost, we're almost getting a, um, like purple hint from the way that these colors are laying, layering. I think some of the gray is spreading out, but by doing this so many times right now, we are continuing to layer these colors and it's getting more and more random the more we go through. So this kind of technique really does benefit from having your yarn move around. And I'm going to have to refill the gray again. But the thing about this that's fun is that I really have some control. And the more we move it, so when you see the harsh lines, like that looks very much like lines, but the more I move it, the more these patches feel uh, different. But man, I considered doing this um, with more colors, but I am really happy with the undertones that we are getting here with these two. Um, we've done multiple layers of dyeing, but yet we still have a lot of variation in that color, and I think it is beautiful. All right, now I'm gonna turn the heat on for real, and we're gonna heat this up nice and high, and then we will start layering on our deeper color. Now, the color will spread. Gosh, and I'm gonna have to decide if I wanna do something organic or if I really want to do something less organic, but <laughs> like more lines, but uh, when I do this, it will also spread, but I'm not gonna be tapping. We'll still have to move the yarn around a lot, but I will not press in that same way. And I'm really, really sorry for the shadow we have over here. It is currently the evening, and I thought that I could have replaced the light bulb of my microwave, which is uh, right there, but it does work. 
just sporadically. Like earlier today I was microwaving something and then the light turned on and I could turn it on and off. But of course now that I want to turn it on, I can't. So uh, apologies for that shadow. We are hot and I'm going to reduce the heat because <laughs> that is a little too hot. All right, now I'm coming in and you know what? I want to throw back that that uh, colorway. Now, part of the magic of this, and I don't know if we'll feel it as much in here today, but when I layered everything as hearts versus the lines, it gave different types of patterning to the yarn. Things felt a little more organic. With the lines, there is, um, you know, something more regular. But with this, you know, here we have areas where they're getting touching closer and further. And so I really, really liked it. So this is what we're going to do to the rest of the yarn. Right now, I'm going to let things sit for about five minutes and then we'll come back and check on it. I like this. The hearts sort of spread out in a little bit of a different kind of gray, which I think is just so, so pretty. All right, I'm now going to pick these up and flip it over, trying to, yeah, keep things open. And the nice thing is we don't need the most full coverage. And we just want some pops of the darkness, some, that's going to be a big heart, little one, half heart, and then a baby heart down there. And so that is what we'll be doing and sending the love that I feel into this. Man, this actually would be a really, really good uh, way to do a Valentine's Day colorway. Uh, I'm now a little bummed that I'm doing this colorway for Hanukkah. But anyway, I'm very, very excited for the direction that this is going. I went into this expecting to go over it multiple times with the navy, but when I lifted the yarn back up, I was actually happy with the coverage. So I had waited five minutes, I added two hearts and one half heart, and then that was that. I am satisfied. And well, that is that. Um, this worked so unbelievably well. This, compared to like speckling with powders or something, this gives a much more subtle like pop of brightness, but I am very, very, very happy with it. Um, so now I'm gonna turn off the heat. I will leave this yarn here in the pan for probably at least 10 minutes before removing it to cool and wash. And then I'm gonna reset and dye this again. But I am really, really happy and I always enjoy it when I can be a tad bit more restrained. I dissolved my initial deep magenta into 500 milliliters of water. And I have over 400 milliliters left. So we are not done. <laughs> it is time for us to leave no dye behind. And I've got two skeins of platinum fingering, one of platinum decay that have been soaking, um, technically in some water with vinegar left over from another project. So the yarn does have some vinegar in it already. But now I'm going to, the pan is still a little warm, but I am going to place this yarn in. We're not exactly dip dyeing, but we are dipping it in. Now, one thing that I would like to note um, is that these are full skeins. And so if I stretched it like the minis, it doesn't really quite line up. Ooh, this is a beautiful, beautiful like raspberry color. Oh, I really, really like that. All right, I'm gonna turn on the heat. We are now starting to heat things up. 
this is going to create a really nice subtle tonal. And the reason why subtle is because the dye bath had some heat, but it was not really that hot. And some color started striking right away. Now is the time for me to start debating. And that is whether we leave this pink as a tonal or if we come in with some of that navy color and spice things up a little bit. This is not the first video that I filmed today, and actually it's not even the first Hanukkah video that I've been working on today. But the other video will be coming out later over the course of the holiday. Sometimes I film things out of order. <laughs> And I actually talk about that in a vlog that I have that will come up at the end of Hanukkah. Uh, I'm not sure exactly on the progression. It depends on how many bonus videos we also end up with, but that'll take you through the whole journey of planning, yarn dyeing, behind the scenes looks and thoughts, and I'll take you through making the extras and wrapping the Hanukkah samplers and all of that jazz. Uh, and so it's just really, really fun to share all of the little things that go in behind the scenes. So make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you don't miss any of it. There is a Hanukkah playlist where you can find all of these videos so you don't need to worry about missing any of them. So when it comes to thought process, I have a few ideas of what we could do with this pink yarn. We could leave it as a gorgeous pink tonal that will pair really, really beautifully with the yarn from tonight. Um, or I could take that navy and add some hearts onto this, uh, similar to what we did with that more subtle pink and gray from earlier. And again, that would pair really, really well with the yarn that we had created today. Now, which one of these choices would you pick? Leave a comment down below. When I'm filming these Hanukkah videos, uh, each of the eight night samplers will have one mini from each of the main videos. And then there's two bonus minis uh, to bring the total amount of yarn up to 100 grams. And so, because I am dyeing 300 grams of yarn right now, about a third of you will receive this colorway. Sometimes there might only be one leave no dye behind skein that is very unique, but this is one that will end up being in more of the kits. And so, I just think that uh, it is really fun and this pink is so pretty. In just the time that we have been talking, almost all of our pink has absorbed. Now, we have the same amount of yarn in here that we did before, but there is um, a little bit more liquid than what we had previously. Let me just reduce the heat and let's come in with this deep color and add some hearts. Now I think that I will need to do more rounds this time. And the reason for that <laughs> is that uh, we have a lot, it's not that we have more yarn, it's that it is harder to get access to all of the yarn that we have in here at the same time which sounds a little bit confusing, but uh, when you have the mini, the mini skeins, it's really easy to sort of spread it out and access all of it, but we will see how many times we need to flip this one. In addition to having more water in here, we also potentially have less acid overall from adding more liquid. But I decided to go with our previous protocol and wait about five minutes before flipping the skein and adding some more hearts randomly to the other side. Then I waited another five minutes to sort of flip the skeins inside out um, to try to access yarn that maybe didn't get any color. It really depends on how far this navy color will penetrate into the yarn. But again, my goal is to not overdo it and to not add too, too much of this blackish navy combo color to the yarn. But I just wanted to sort of pump up the volume for the counterpart to those other mini skeins. Not bad. 
The penetration of the color was better than I expected, and especially since it's sort of random, loose coverage, I think that I'm fairly satisfied with it, which feels great. Ugh, this color is so deep, and that little bit of that navy black kind of color may brought in a little bit of purple, and I think that this will be a really, really beautiful counterpart to the other yarn. So. I am going to leave this in here for about 10 minutes. I just turn off the heat, um, let it cool a bit, and then we can wash it. Let's wash our yarn. I'm not expecting to see any bleeding, but oh, this is so, so pretty. I love that it feels fairly neutral almost. Um, which is fun. Not that it's neutral, like this isn't something that would hold up to some, like a really complicated stitch pattern or anything like that, but it is beautiful and it is not bleeding. Um, I'm now gonna add a little bit of some clear dish soap. Sometimes people ask if you have to use soap to wash the yarn that you've dyed, and the answer is no. I like to use soap mainly to demonstrate in these videos if soap is going to cause um, any of the color to bleed. So that's the main reason why I do it. You could just do a quick soak in with some wool wash and things like that as well. But the color is staying in our yarn. I'm going to rinse out the soap, um, put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. And we'll come back and look at our brighter pink yarn. Okay, I'm going to admit I'm doing something that's a little bad. The yarn is almost cool. It's still a little bit warm, but comfortably warm. But we are gonna add it to some lukewarm tap water to wash it. So hopefully I won't um, say, oh no, Rebecca, I shouldn't have done that. I should have waited. But I'm actually not seeing any bleeding, so phew. <laughs> Um, this berry color is delightful. Um, once again, I'm going to add a little bit of dish soap. It's so fun to see such a vibrant, vibrant pink. Oh, which, like, isn't to say, like, I, I use this color a lot. Um, this is a color I really, really like, but it is just really, really exciting and makes me happy, and there's no bleeding. So I will rinse out the soap. I'll uh, put this through my spin dryer, and when I come back, all the yarn will be dry. Here is some of the finished dry yarn. We have two different fingering weight and one batch of our DK. And I have to say that the colorways are overall a little bit more subtle than what I'd envisioned in my head. That deep navy slash black color really did sort of blend out and spread, which gives this yarn a really, really stunning watercolor feel, but it isn't quite the pop of darkness on the other colors that I had sort of envisioned, but I don't really mind because I love it. I love this so, so much. And there are definitely places where you can feel the little more pop of darkness, but the coverage is beautiful. This colorway is soft and variegated and random, maybe a little bit less random on the micro skeins because um, if you're looking at a set of 10, you'll see that like, the, you know, some of these changes, okay, here maybe there's some difference, but things might line up a little bit more than they would have if these were full skeins. But it's such a fun colorway. When it came to creating a bonus, I considered just leaving this at our tonal magenta pink color. And boy, oh boy, am I glad that I added that pop of dark. I think that this is so, so glorious and stunning. And it gives these large speckles, which will just add a lot of interest to a project. And not only do I love this in its own right, but I love the way that this deeper colorway pairs with the more subtle. There are characteristics about the two with the randomness of this darker color integrated in it that 
make them pair super, super well together and they'd blend really, really well together. Um, maybe not quite a perfect fade, but still using them both in a project, they are related and you can feel that. And so I'm so excited that um, so many, that I guess a third of the Hanukkah samplers will contain one of these bright pink pops of color. Which of these skeins is your favorite? Uh, let me know down in the comments. Here is one set of 15, and it is subtle, but there are definitely some micro skeins that are paler and a little less pigmented than others that have maybe more of the pink and navy in there. And so this is a fairly asymmetric technique. Now this doesn't mean that the yarn that you create would be a complete fade, but this is a way, and you could take advantage of this with how you lay the yarn out in the pan to intentionally create some kind of fade. But I'm more showing this because if you're doing this on 100 grams of yarn, then there could be um, some variation and then some sections with more color and then there might be some sections with less and back and forth. Again, not necessarily a gradient or asymmetric, but just some variation versus being a repeating colorway. So if I'm talking about something being a non-repeating colorway and I'm just sort of blending this up a little bit more, um, all that means is that when you look at the whole, you see some variation in there versus each round that you go through the skein, you have that same pattern or something that will pool. Like this kind of colorway probably won't pool very much. And again, on a 10 gram mini, it could pool because there could be a little bit more repeating within 10 grams, um, just because these minis are so thin that they're more likely in this little section to be similar. But you could see, um, especially before I blended these uh, micro skeins a bit, that we do have some variation in here. Laid out this way, the set over on the far left, you can see some of that asymmetry from how I've laid them out. I have fingering weight on either side and then DK in the center. But I think that this colorway is just subtle and oh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, a lot of fun. And I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think about this yarn, uh, whether you're holding it in person because you just unwrapped it from your Hanukkah sampler, or if you're watching on the video from home. I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, this technique is absolutely a favorite of mine, and it's one that I will continue to explore more and more and more and more and more in the future. I absolutely love this technique and the softness that you can get. And we got all these layer and depth in our yarn really using three colors. I guess technically four, that dark color was a mixture. The three main mixtures of dye. And you can go further and layer many, many colors on with this type of technique. Or you could go with fewer and maybe even just layer a single color if you wanted something more tonal. There is just so much variety that you can put into it. Don't forget to check out the Chemnitz Hanukkah playlist if you've missed any of the videos. Tomorrow, for night five, we will have another really fun project, and I cannot wait for you to see it. Unfortunately, there are no more Hanukkah samplers available, but in general, if you love the yarn that I dye and would like to bring some home with you, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. My shop is filled with hand-dyed yarn featured in my videos, and all of my yarn is labeled with the video and date that that video was published, so that way you can easily go back and watch the video to see me create the yarn while you're turning it into something fantastic. You can find links to my shop and other places you can find me on social media down in the description below. I could probably do an entire series of videos just layering color like this. And as I mentioned, you can create fades within one pan if you asymmetrically, intentionally add color more to one side than the other. A fade like that is easier to do, I would say, on minis than if you're doing full skeins, but it is also possible if you're dyeing, say, 300 grams of yarn in full 100 gram skeins at the same time. Today that the video is published is my birthday! So don't forget to subscribe
subscribe. It's a great birthday present and a huge way that you can support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.